All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Ian Cabasag, and today I will be presenting my Master's of Science in Fire Protection Engineering culminating project. And it's called the UCSD Canyon Vista Dining Renovation Fire Life Safety Design. Before I will start, here's a few tidbits of my personal background. I have been working for five years in the civil and structural realm at which I transitioned to fire protection engineering where I have been working for three years since. Currently, I am working in NAVFAC in San Diego, mostly doing military projects. With that, here's an overview of what we'll cover today. We shall start with building background to prescriptive design and end it with performance design, where I will offer some insights. For section one, just to help you guys get oriented with the building, I have provided a few pictograms as well as throughout the presentation. Canyon Vista Dining Project is a renovation of an existing two-story dining facility located in the Warren College area at the University of California, San Diego, UCSD campus. The proposed renovations intend to improve the dining experience with a better diversity of food options and indoor and outdoor seating. This global exterior view depicts that the building in Red Square is located north of the main UCSD campus and west of the I-5 freeway. Shown in red square is more of a local exterior view of the dining facility where it is surrounded by student dormitories. Displayed here are the interior spaces of floor one and how to access the main front door as marked in red circles. Floor one contains the food service area where we show in orange triangle, the location of design fire scenario one, which we will cover in the performance based design section. This one is for floor two and how to access the main front door as well. Floor two contains the large lounge or office area where we show in orange triangle, the location again of the design fire scenario two later on. What is not shown here is the mechanical penthouse level that is central to the building for distribution of HVAC. This level is mainly not occupiable and only available for service personnel. For section two, we start our prescriptive design with structure fire resistance and interior finish. Upon accessing the floor plans, the building consists of groups A2, A3, B, and S1 occupancies with assembly as the most restrictive. Because the building is mostly reinforced concrete and exposed structured steel, this type of construction is type 2B. Checking the allowable area, the allowable story, and then the allowable heights, the calculated ratios for each occupancy are all less than the limiting ratios per level and per building total. Because the building is type 2B, no fire resistance rating is required. Because the building has 20 foot plus fire separation distance from property lines and other adjacent buildings, no limit is required for opening areas. From occupancies, the interior finishes are class B to C for walls and ceilings and class two for floors. 
For section three, we cover occupancy and special hazard fire suppression, where we will follow this design approach. A hydrant water flow test was conducted to determine water supply as shown. Also shown here is our field investigation site plan where we located fire protection features, including hydrants. For occupancy hazard and design sprinkler criteria indicating discharge density and design area, we show here with floor one as ordinary hazard group one, floor two as light hazard, and mechanical penthouse as ordinary hazard group one. With that, hydraulic calculations show that the water supply versus demand curves with pressure orders over 200% in all levels. To check special hazards, the building needs class K fire extinguishers for kitchen areas and class ABC for all other areas. Afterwards, fire sprinkler plans were generated. For section four, we cover fire alarm and detection and smoke control where we will follow this design approach. For design visual intensity and sound level, we show here for each floor. as well as for the battery supply calcs with 20% safety margin in all levels. To check smoke control, the building does not need smoke control because there were no atria, enclosed stairs or tunnels. Afterwards, the fire alarm plans were generated. For section five, we cover means of egress and life safety, where we will follow this design approach. Using each space usage, occupant load factors were obtained and egress capacity factor 0.3 for stairs and 0.2 for doors were used. With that, Occupant load and egress capacity calculations were performed for only occupiable levels of floor one and floor two with more than enough egress overage in all levels. With also, diagonal distances and travel distances were not exceeded. Afterwards, life safety plans were generated. For section six, we move on to performance design where we will follow the SFPE design process as shown. For section seven, we cover goals and objectives. Goal one is to provide the fire protection and life safety of occupants not intimate with the initial fire development. Goal two is to improve survivability of occupants intimate with the initial fire development. 
Objective one is to maintain occupant protection to allow for occupants not intimate with the fire development time needed to evacuate. And objective two is to maintain structure integrity to allow for occupants intimate with the fire development time needed to survive. To satisfy objective one, an ASET versus RSET analysis is conducted. And to satisfy objective two, an RSET versus structure failure time or SFT is conducted. For section eight, we cover design basis and fire hazard analysis, where we have two design fires, one for each main level. Design fire scenario one is a food kiosk fire located in the restaurant area in floor one. Shown here are the design heat release rate curves for fuel package in red and sprinkler controlled in blue, where it activates at 68 degrees Celsius. Flashover does not occur due to the building having almost 50% of total surface area serving as ventilation openings. Therefore, we have a fuel controlled fire. To account for re-radiation where multiple secondary fuel packages can be ignited, only the original fuel package heat release rate curve is used or the red curve. We follow the same procedure for design fire scenario two, but with workstation fire located in the office area in floor two. For section nine, we cover engineering analysis. We start out with occupant protection for design fire scenario one. Our set is the sum of the movement time, detection time, pre-movement time, and safety factor. To account for spaces not having maximum occupant utilization, movement time used is the average time from Pathfinder. Detection time is the activation time at 57.2 degrees Celsius. Based on British Standard 7974 document with a study on student pre-movement time, for the project, we utilize one minute. As for safety factor, we use 1.5 applied to movement time to account for pinch points and evacuating queuing. For a set, this is the minimum FDS time between the temperature criteria at 65 degrees Celsius to account for respiratory tract burns only. And visibility criteria at four meters to account for students in this dining area being very familiar with their surroundings. Altogether, the ASAT to AS, the RSET to ASAT ratio is 0.78, where RSET is less than ASAT. We follow the same procedure for design fire scenario two for occupant protection, where the results show that the RSET to ASAT ratio is 0.99, again with RSET less than ASAT. Next, we move on to structure integrity, where we modeled a structured steel beam in Abacus. The stability criterion from ASTM E119, where we record the structure failure time, is when the beam experiences peak temperatures at 704 Celsius and average temperatures at 593 degrees Celsius. For design fire scenario one, 
and two, both are less than one or no failure at all, where the R set is less than the SFT. With that, for my last section, with all the designs completed, we provide some conclusions and recommendations. Goal one and objective one were satisfied in maintaining occupant protection. And the recommendation one is to just ensure occupant loads are not exceeded and egress components are not obstructed, which can easily be implemented in an operational and maintenance manual. Goal two and objective two were also satisfied in maintaining structural integrity. And their recommendation two is as simple as just ensuring type 2B fire ratings are maintained. And with all of that, this concludes my presentation. And please let me know if you have any questions.